We went on a quest to find the best indoor antenna at the best price and turned up some interesting results along with a clear winner. The test was between three different indoor antennas. Two are homemade and the other one was a commercially produced antenna that was purchased in a store. We tested the antenna in two different locations. The first one was located 24 miles from the broadcast towers and the second one was located 42 miles from the broadcast towers. Distance was measured in a straight line using Google Earth. According to the FCC digital TV reception maps, the signal strength for the closer location was rated strong, while the signal strength for the location further away was rated as weak. Both tests were held on a good weather day. Over-the-air antennas can be affected by the weather, just like satellite providers. However, unlike satellite dishes, reception can sometimes be improved just by moving the antenna, sometimes as little as an inch in any direction. We can't explain how it works, but we know that it does work. Another caveat is antenna location. The best location is on an outside wall facing the broadcast towers. So if the towers are located to the south of you, then you want to put your antenna on a south facing wall. It doesn't have to be on a window, just a regular wall is fine. Antennas at the opposite end of the house don't always work as well as they could. You should also try to stay above ground level. Also, keep the length of the cable from the antenna to the TV under 20 feet for best results. The first antenna we used was one we made out of aluminum foil. We used the heavy duty stuff since it's easier to work with. In this case, we attached two strips to the wall behind the TV. Each strip is about 24 inches long and the width of the aluminum foil box it came in. We just pulled out a sheet, tore it off using the cutter edge on the box, and attached it to the wall using push pins. However, since this type of arrangement isn't portable, we also made one using uh, aluminum foil and a pizza box cover. This antenna can be moved if necessary. So if you have a bad weather day and you're not getting reception, you can move it from one point to another. Check out our video on how to build one on a pizza box by clicking on the link in the description or the link at the end of this video. Both the pizza box antenna and the one we attached to the wall provided the same results. However, because the pizza box antenna is portable, we give it the edge. As far as the wall goes, both strips were attached to the wall using push pins, one on each corner. The strips were placed next to each other, but without touching each other. We used a standard 300 ohm coax transformer with two lead wires that you can buy at any hardware store for $3 on average. This was the biggest expense for this antenna since all the other materials cost less than 50 cents. Once we had the strips attached to the wall, we attached one transformer lead wire to one of the sheets using another push pin and we attached the other lead to the other sheet using a push pin. Push pins are nice because they hold the lead nice and tight against the aluminum foil and keep it in place. You can also put a piece of duct tape over the lead before putting in the push pin give it a little more additional strength. You can't use duct tape by itself because if you hang the antenna on the wall, the force of gravity will pull the leads away from the duct tape within a few hours. Okay, once you have the uh, transformer attached to the sheet, all you have to do is screw the uh, uh, coax cable into the end. Then you attach the other end of the coax cable to the antenna in port on the TV. This can be identified as antenna in or antenna cable. This antenna worked very well and picked up both the strong and the weak signals. However, at the 42 mile location, we used the pizza box configuration instead of the uh, static wall attachment. The second antenna we used was also homemade. We made this earlier before we did the aluminum foil antenna, which came about as an experiment, but the other one we used copper wire and relied on fractal math. At that time it was suggested that there was some sort of magic involving fractal design antennas and their special shapes were necessary to receive a broadcast signal, but that isn't necessarily true. Each year is made with a piece of 10 gauge copper wire with the insulation stripped off. 
You also need some screws and washers to hold the wire to a piece of wood. Starting with a piece 10 inches long, you bend the wire in the shapes shown to create a star shape. Each leg of the star is about an inch long. Four or six of these are made and attached to a piece of wood in the pattern shown, two or three on each side. You can use a foot long piece of 2x4 or even a 1x4 or a 1x6. It doesn't matter if the ears stick out over the edge of the wood or not either. You know, if you want, you can use a piece of acrylic. Each set of ears, whether there were the two or three on each side, are connected together using an 8 inch piece of wire as shown, and then both sides are connected together using the leads from the transformer as shown. This antenna also worked perfectly for both locations, the 24 mile location and the 42 mile location. It also takes more time to make this type of antenna and it costs a couple of bucks more in material. The third option was a rabbit ear antenna, the old kind that have been around for a long time. These worked with analog broadcasts and they still work with digital broadcasts. The one we used for this test was a cheap one we found at a garage sale, but if you want to buy one on Amazon, you can get them for just $9. All you have to do is connect the uh, coax cable from the antenna to the TV. This one sort of worked at the 24 mile location. On a good day, it brought in most of the channels, but much of the time it failed to bring in all of the channels all of the time. It was necessary to move the antenna around to get some shows if it brought them in at all. The antenna was pretty much worthless at the 42 mile location. As you can see, cheaply made homemade antennas will do the job just as well as any antenna you can buy in a store. In some cases, an antenna you make out of the materials already in your kitchen will outperform a commercial antenna. So before you go out and spend $20 to $80 on an antenna, Make your own as a test. It will only take a few minutes, and if you can't pick up any stations on it, a store-bought antenna won't do the job either. It just means you're in a very bad location for over-the-air broadcasts. Check out our How to Get Free TV website for more information.